my name is Rebecca, and welcome to episode two of A Priest Crafts. Um, I'm coming to you from Akalawit, Nunavut, which is in the far north of Canada, um, and I'm a priest, and I love to make things. So this is a video version of my uh, regular blog, which you can find at osbornfiber.com, and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Rebby J. Um, so what you'll hear from me right now, I'm really into spinning, so you'll hear about one project that I'm working on and some reflections on it. So uh, last time I talked about a core spinning project I did, which I was knitting into a kind of vest, circular vest cardigan thing. That is finished, uh, so if you're interested in seeing it, I'm going to put the link um, to the project uh, in the show notes at osbornfiber.com. You can link to them below. And the pattern, I also published the pattern, is a free pattern that is designed to work for any gauge. So if you want to check that out, again, the link you can find in the show notes. And I'm really excited about it, so I hope you'll take a look. So for this week, the spinning project I want to share with you, and by the way, I apologize that my voice is so rough. I'm getting over a cold. I'm trying to project. So I hope you can hear me okay. This week, I am really excited. Uh, I have an experiment I want to share with you because uh, I was inspired by this uh, top that I have. I've had it for about four years, and it's this really interesting top. It's pretty thin. You can see it's not as wide as a normal comb top would be. It's just only this big, and it's got all these colors in it. This is a bit of a mystery to me. I bought it, I don't know the company that I bought it from. I bought it at Maryland Sheep Bone Wool Festival in 2013. And um, I don't know, I'm hoping to get this up right before Maryland Sheep and Wool. So if you go, um, your assignment, oh sleuth, is to go into the main barn. It was in the main barn, if you go in the main entrance, and um, Hi. Hello, monkey. Hey, so I have a monkey helper now. Say hi, Naomi. Hi. Hi. So as I was saying, I have this, this top. And if you are going to Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, you can take a look and see if you can figure out for me where this came from. Um, if you go into the main barn, they always had a booth on the right side of the right lane maybe like three or four stalls back and they always had these tall um, tall displays with boot with big bins kind of angled out all full of these long bags of fiber like the one you just saw so if you happen to see that I'll let me know in the comments and I'll add it in one of those little card things so people can know because I feel bad sharing this with you and not being able to tell you where it came from yeah yawn weird monkey so I don't even know what this kind of preparation is technically called. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it's, it's got to be some kind of comb top, and it looks commercial in some kind of way. Um, it's wool. Let's see if we can figure out the staple length here. It's maybe, whoops. I don't know, maybe four inches, maybe a four inch staple length. So it's hard to know. The crimp is not super defined. It's been really stretched out by whatever, oops, oops, by whatever commercial process it went through. It's been pretty, um, pretty flattened. So it's hard to know what it is. And I don't know, I'm just gonna call it like a rainbow top or something. Um, so again, if you know what this is called, let me know so I can put in a card and give accurate information. But my, this really interested me because I had no idea what to do with it. And I had no idea how I wanted the colors to go. Obviously, if I drop <laughs> this down. Hi. Okay, can you be quiet so that they can hear me talking with my raspy voice? Obviously, if I just draft this rainbow down, it's going to turn into some kind of brown. It's going to just be brown. And that's fine. 
and I do want to know what that looks like, but I don't know that I want to spend four ounces of brown. And I'm curious about what will happen if I draft it different ways, like if I pulled off the staple and did it over the fold, or if I, you know, spun back and forth across the top. So um, I'm, I'm going to try, what I'm going to try and do is draft it four different ways. I've divided it into four bumps four equal bumps and I'm going to try and draft it four different ways and apply it a couple different ways so that we can see what the colors do under different circumstances. And I'm hoping that this will give us information for not just this kind of preparation but other kind of layered um, preparations like if you, it reminded me of this book, Color and Spinning by Deb Menz. She does a lot of she has a whole chapter on like doing color by how you comb off of a hackle. So if you did like layered combing off of a hackle like that, I'm thinking it would give you a similar preparation to play with. Um, or if you had a layered bat, a bat like I was working with last time that had different colors layered on it, if you strip that off, you'd get a similar kind of deal where you had a thin piece with many different colors. So I'm hoping that this will be interesting, that it will be useful. Um, so I'm going to record the different ways that I draft it, and um, we're going to get started. I think it'll be fun. Do you think it'll be fun? Yeah. Yeah? Thanks for helping, Gnomes. All right, let's get started.
before I start applying, let's take a minute to just say a few things about the single spinning. It's funny because as I said before, I didn't know what the fiber was, but as soon as I started spinning, I realized this has got to be BFL um, because first off, it wasn't taking a lot of crimp it, or it wasn't taking a lot of twists. Uh, I started out at nine to one on my Astro traditional and it immediately started um, just pigtailing right there before it even got to the orifice. It did not want to take much twist. So I switched to six to one and I spun all of it six to one uh, on my Ashford traditional. Uh, anything else I need to know about that? Uh, I was trying to stay fairly consistent. I cheated and used a sample card from a previous spin, uh, a fractal spin from a few uh, weeks ago, just because I knew that was about the thickness I wanted. Uh, and I just followed that because I don't have a spinner's control card yet. So that was kind of the base, what I was going for. I wanted to be consistent so that eventually I can put these together and see what they're doing. You know, control the number of variables in your experiment, right? So this is the first bobbin that you saw. Uh, it was interesting because I was trying to draft all the colors together, but it, they weren't all drafting together. Um, I wasn't trying very obsessively to keep them together because I didn't want to fight with it. Um, but I found, I, I found that I was often drafting from one half or the other half or one half or the other half. So it's not, you still get some dots of color in there. Overall, I think it's, it's definitely gray, definitely kind of a purpley gray. And from a distance, it's going to look kind of browny, purpley gray, which is what I expected. But there is a surprising amount of dots once you get close in. So that's the first, that was the first single. The second single was spinning across the top. Now I'm not very good at spinning across the top yet. And I'm going to link below to, uh, Welford Pearl's uh, Rachel Smith's video on spinning across the top, which if you want a tutorial, that's a good one. Um, I got pretty good at, at it by the end, but I often again felt like I was just going back and forth between one half of the top and the other half of the top and only rarely was I getting really only drafting one or two colors together. It was usually I was drafting three or four colors together. So there's a good amount of marling going on in the singles, um, but you can see it'll stripe a little bit and it's not going to be consistent because I was just sort of, I was kind of fighting with it going back and forth and back and forth. So that's number two. You can see that. The third one was probably my favorite, partly because stripping, uh, stripping and then, and, and then spinning is, what I like to do all the time. So it was the easiest to spin. Uh, but you also saw that because I stripped it down so much, I was definitely only drafting two, maybe three colors together at once. So you can see on the bobbin, I finished it off spinning, you know, spinning the last four strips, one, two, three, four. So you could see them. I think that's right. No, one, two, three, four is the last. These were the last four strips right here. So you can see, um, yeah, so that's really that's really gonna stripe, and it's actually gonna stripe consistently because I broke I, I broke into very equal like ten equal lengths down the one ounce that I did, so that'll be really interesting to see how that stripes up. Uh, the fourth one was over the fold, and again this was a struggle for me because this is relatively new. I haven't done this much, and again I will link to a proper tutorial down below. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about spinning over the fold, over the fold, uh, I I record I tried to record like my best moment so you could at least see a kind of not terrible example, but um, I mostly really kind of fought with it and um, so it's really uneven. It's it's quite uneven, but what was what's really interesting about it is um, that this is the one that really kept the colors separate, so you actually see. You can see all the individual colors. There's nowhere near as much marling in the singles. Excuse me. I'm sorry. My voice is still. My voice is still a bit of a mess. Not quite back to my usual voice. Um, 
but that was really interesting. Uh, so even though it's not even it's not consistent, it's uh, it it separated the colors out really differently from the other ones. It was also neat to see a woolen spun example instead of a worsted spun example. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but um, to my eye, at least, I can see that this is really fuzzy and matte, whereas this is quite shiny. You can probably see that has a little bit more shine. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a lot fuzzier than this. And spinning across the top was definitely the most dense. I measured out exactly one ounce before I started all this. These all have exactly one ounce, but you can see this looks like it has a lot more because there's a lot more air in it. So that was interesting. pretty exciting. I'm not actually going to go into much detail on the differences that I'm finding between them because in a video you're not going to be able to see because they're they're just too similar. Um, what I'd really like to do is take all these and knit them up into a scarf, kind of a tapered scarf uh, that I have planned out and then I'll be able to do the in-depth kind of in the weeds scheme by scheme and color analysis with pictures. That'll be more appropriate to a blog post. So look for that hopefully in the next couple of weeks. We'll see. Uh, I will say a few things just sort of generally about um, what I learned. Uh, let's see. Got to find the right ones here. So this is the one. Oh, this one is the one that's just gray. Is that right? No, it's not. Yeah, yeah, it is. This is the one that's just gray. Gray, brown, whatever you want to call it. This is the most mixed up one, just center pole ball applied with itself. Um, I found that when I took this single and applied it with, I took one ply of this and applied it with one each of the others, um, it looked really, it, I mean, it looked muted like you would expect. And I won't really be able to see if there's some difference between them until I, again, I knit them up. Uh, the interesting thing about this is because I want to stick in a picture here of what the, what the top looks like in grayscale so you can see that it's relatively close in value. So because the values are pretty similar, uh, that means it'll blend. It's going to tend to blend more quickly. So kind of like if you put a bunch of pastels together, that would all be light. Say hello. Yeah, you got to play quietly, though, sweetheart. Kind of like if you took a bunch of pastels and put them together, uh, they're going to be more quick to blend. So it'll be interesting to see if there's some subtle striping with these guys with the ones that I put together with the gray brown but I won't know till I knit them up uh, as far as the rest of them the contrast was between a traditional two ply and a center pole ball 
to ply. And those of you who are spinners will know that the difference is between taking taking repeats and lining them up like this versus lining them up like this. So putting them up next to each other so they're going the same direction or putting them opposite to each other. Functionally, for most of us, since we're not super perfect even spinners, you know, they'll slide out of alignment after a while and this will slide out of alignment after a while. So it really just ends up mixing them up. For me, since the um, since spinning across the top and spinning over the fold were both uh, not as even, they ended up quite similar between the two. Like these are these are both of the across the top ones, and they are very 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 similar. And these are the two over the fold ones. Again, they're really bright, and these are definitely the brightest ones because it isolated, spinning over the fold isolated the colors really well. Um, but they're very similar to each other, ply-wise. So the one that was a little different was the, um, these two, yeah. These two, the ones that I spun stripped down because I stripped them down to quite consistent length, like the repeats are very consistent. And so for the traditional two-ply, the colors lined up a lot, and so you can actually see there's a good bit of striping, so that'll be cool. Whereas for the center pole ball, they went like this, and so it ended up kind of all the colors blended together a lot. So you see a little bit of striping, but not as strong as the bottom one. So that was, that was kind of cool. I thought that was interesting. So say hello again. Hello again. Yeah, and my helper's back for our last, my last little reflection. Um, the funny thing for me about making this yarn is, while I was making it and when it was finished, I found that I didn't really like it. I was kind of bleh about the colors, which I, I liked the yarn itself, you know, how it was turning out, but the, the color, which is what the experiment was all about, was kind of, I wasn't really loving it. And, I was wondering why it was that. It was kind of frustrating since I put all this thought into it. I didn't want to end up with something I didn't even really like. And so I was thinking about why don't I like it? What can I do about this? And I had some help in thinking about it because I've been reading this book by Felicia Lowe, Dying to Spin in It. And she does, she talks about color theory at the beginning and does all that part really well. But she also talks some about color associations and why we feel the way we do about certain colors because of our culture, because of our background, or, you know, maybe events in our lives that have happened to us. You know, we all have stories associated with color, and that can make a big difference. And that really meant a lot to me because, you know, as a minister, I encounter people's emotional reactions all the time, uh, especially because, you know, if you know I'm a religious person or that that's my job, you know, sometimes people react nev negatively to that be before they even know me. And, you know, that can be because of totally legitimate experiences in, you know, in your past or that you've had, you know, I totally get that. I never judge anybody for that. But, you know, what happened in their past doesn't really have to do with me. So I, I thought it would be helpful for me to think about my associations with this yarn and see if I could change them, if I could change my attitude, associate this with something else and see if that helped me, you know, like it instead of just liking it. And so I was thinking and thinking, and I was thinking about the couch at my parents' house because it kind of reminded me of some upholstery on a couch my parents used to have. And I was thinking and thinking and thinking about it and thinking, you know, that doesn't have to be a negative association. You know, yeah, it it's not the most beautiful couch, but I have lots of happy memories associated with that couch and sitting on it and watching movies together. And we still love to watch movies together. My family does. And, you know, why can't I think of that? And there's also a lot of red in this yarn, which can make me think of my mom because she loves red and wears lots of red. So that was... I think by the end of thinking about that, I was really excited about working with this yarn and wearing it. Because it's even, you know, these are colors that I wear, you know, muted brownie colors. It's totally my colors. Um, so objectively, 
it's completely reasonable for me to like this yarn. And it was neat to associate it with something positive. So it could maybe be, you know, something, something more complicated, but something beautiful. So I wonder if you've ever had that, an experience like that of, you know, having something that you initially reacted against and, and maybe came around about it, um, whether it's about color or something else. I'll be curious to hear your story. If you have a story like that, I'd love to hear it in the comments. We're almost done. Almost done. Can you hang in there? I just want to say thank you to everybody who's watching. Thank you for hanging in there with all my cuts and stuff. And, and my little helper. I don't know that I'll always do that kind of thing with like photographing or videotaping as I'm going. Um, it's, it's just kind of time consuming, but it was fun. Uh, I'm just aiming to shoot something that I would be interested in watching. That's kind of my judge. That's how I judge. So I hope you did find it interesting. And if you have anything you want to contribute, any corrections, uh, I would love to hear them. So please share them in the comments. And I hope you have an awesome day filled with crafting or whatever you love the most. Okay. God bless. Bye-bye.